Hello and welcome to Serena Speaks and today I'll be speaking about the new updated asthma guidelines that are available. So as with many things, things get updated and we need to update ourselves not only for the exam but for when we're practicing as well. So in my respiratory video, I did um, go over the old asthma guidelines there and I created little posters, which are then uploaded onto the Facebook page. I'm going to keep those there so at least you can see it and compare it to what the new guidelines are now. And in the description box, I'll put a link to the new BTS guidelines. Have a look at the charts on pages 78 and 79. Great diagrams, great way for trying to revise this particular section. But let's go through it now. So if we start off with asthma in children, asthma management in children. So what was it before and how has it changed? So beforehand, what was said was if a child is using their blue inhaler, so their SABA, their short acting beta agonist inhaler, if they're using it more than three times a week, or they're exhibiting nighttime symptoms once a week, or they've had an exacerbation in the last two years, we're gonna have to step up their treatment. So what we might do is add them onto an inhaled corticosteroid, an ICS, such as our Clenil, our Cuva, our Beclometasone inhalers. Or if they can't tolerate this, we'll add a leukotriene receptor antagonist, such as Montelukast. So it was one or the other. Now, the next step said, well, actually, if their asthma symptoms still aren't being controlled, we're going to add both of them, the ICS and the LTRA. So step one was just SABA. Step two was ICS or LTRA. Step three is all of them, basically. And step four then said, well, if control still isn't being achieved, we'll have to refer them to a paediatric specialist. So that was the old guidelines. What are the new guidelines saying? So the new guidelines, again, child is going to start off with their short acting beta 2 agonist. We might need to add them on a very, very low dose of an inhaled corticosteroid. However, if they're under five years old, we'll add them onto a leukotriene receptor antagonist instead. Again, if control isn't being achieved, then we're going to keep them on that very low dose of ICS. And if they're over five years old, we'll add on a LABA, a long acting beta agonist. And if they're under five years old, we're going to keep them on that LTRA and add them on the ICS. The next step then said, well, we need to assess whether the LABA is actually having a benefit in these children. If it, is, if it isn't having a benefit, so control isn't adequately being controlled by the LABA, then we're going to stop it and we're going to increase the dose of the ICS. However, if the LABA is going well for them, it's working for them, keep them on it and again increase the ICS. And potentially we might need to add on a leukotriene receptor antagonist. So the child is going to be on all of them basically. Again, if the child's symptoms still aren't being adequate, um, control still isn't being achieved, then we might need to increase the dose of the ICS and maybe consider adding on something like slow release theophylline. And the very last stage would be, again, if control isn't being achieved, well, we might need to consider adding them onto an oral corticosteroid. Now, if we can think of other treatments instead, then let's go for them. But if not, then we might need to put them on these oral corticosteroids and maintain that same medium dose of ICS as well. So that was for children. So now let's move on to adults. So what did the old guidelines say about adults? Well, first and foremost, our SABA, our short acting beta 2 agonist. We might need to add on a preventer. So our inhaled corticosteroid, our ICS. If more control is still needed, we might consider adding on a LABA, a long-acting beta 2 agonist. If the patient is responding well to that, they're responding adequately to that, then let's continue them on that LABA and even potentially increase the dose of their ICS. However, if they're not getting an adequate response from the LABA, let's stop that and let's increase the dose of the ICS and potentially add on a leukotriene receptor antagonist or slow-release theophylline. But if the patient is still getting persistent poor control, then we might need to increase the dose of the ICS further and definitely add on either slow release theophylline, um, potentially even beta 2 agonist tablets or our leukotriene receptor antagonist. And the very last step, if again 
adequate response isn't being achieved, control isn't being achieved, then we would need to consider oral steroid tablets. So with the new guidelines, they're actually very similar to the old ones. The only real change that I notice is that introduction, potential introduction of a long acting muscarinic antagonist within step three and step four. So let's start at the beginning. So again, we've got our SABA. After that, we might need to introduce a regular preventer such as our inhaled corticosteroid. After that, if control still isn't being achieved, we might need to add on a LABA. If a patient isn't responding well to the LABA, again, let's stop that and increase the dose of the ICS. However, if a patient is going well with the LABA, then keep them on it and still may potentially increase the dose of the ICS. And you might introduce your slow release theophylline, your leukotriene receptor antagonist, or a long acting muscarinic antagonist. Again, if control isn't being achieved very well, let's increase that dose of our ICS and definitely put them on that either that leukotriene receptor antagonist, slow release theophylline, long acting muscarinic antagonist, or even a beta 2 agonist tablet. And our very last step, our oral um, steroid tablets. But again, we'd want to consider other treatments first before heading to, that, to, to the oral steroid tablets. That's kind of our last resort. So hopefully, as you'll be able to see, the guidelines haven't changed that drastically, but when new guidelines are put up, it's really important that we update ourselves on them and we update our knowledge. And you know I'm a big advocate for learning whilst you're at work. So when a patient presents a prescription to you and you can see there are inhalers on there, have a think to yourself. Well, first and foremost, are they an adult? Are they a child? And based on what inhalers they're on, based on what inhalers I can see they've previously been on on their PMR, what stage of asthma are they at? What um, would potentially need to be added so that they were stepped up? What would need to be taken away so that they were stepped down? It's a good way to test yourself whilst you're on the job, whilst you're at work. And in all honesty, it's the best way that you're going to remember this and, and learn it, basically. So hopefully this video was very helpful to you and gives you a better understanding of what the old guidelines were and what the new guidelines now. And if you found this video useful, why not give us a like, give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, visit my Facebook page, join me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter and I'll follow you back. And until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revising.